So welcome to another episode of Money and Medicine. Uh, if this is your first time that you're joining in, my name is Stefan Bortma. With me is my co-host, Van Hatten. Today we're going to talk about retirement annuities. We're going to talk about the accessibility of a, of a retirement annuity. How can you contribute towards this inbe- investment vehicle? And we're just going to take a closer look of the benefits pertaining to the specific uh, investment vehicle. <music> Just before we start, in brief, Vanden, why do we do what we do? What is the purpose of Money and Medicine and who can watch this? If this is the first time you are joining Money and Medicine, um, we started the platform as an educational platform specifically focused at medical professionals. Um, Dealing with medical professionals exclusively or predominantly over the last couple of years, we basically came to know that there's a big need for valuable information to help you make an informed decision. So what we decided to do is to create a platform where you can access information at your own time, at your convenience, um, at the comfort of your home, where you can listen at different topics that we will discuss. For when you meet with your financial advisor, you can make an informed decision. So brief introduction on retirement annuities. What is a retirement annuity? I think it's important to note that a retirement annuity is only a vehicle in which one can invest. It doesn't necessarily determine the growth of this vehicle. The underlying assets, which we've discussed in the previous video, uh, determines the growth of a vehicle and it also determines the associated risk, etc. Um, a vehicle in which one invests, like for example a retirement annuity or a tax-free saving, is just the way that it is taxed. So it's almost like the tax framework around a vehicle. Um, another important thing to note with a retirement annuity is it's only accessible at the age of 55. So let's talk about accessibility. It's a long-term investment vehicle. So. Um, like you mentioned, Stefan, the, the retirement annuity vests at the age of 55. Okay. There is ways that you can access the money before the age of 55, but then the fund value needs to be very small. Yeah. Um, for example, if you have less than 7,500 Rand available in a specific vehicle, then you can access the full lump sum before the age of 55. But as soon as that fund value exceeds 7,500 Rand, there's no longer access to it. Then you unfortunately have to wait until the age of 55 before you can access any of those funds. Yeah. Um, I think it's also important to note that if you are immigrating from South Africa then, and you can prove financial immigration, mm-hmm. then you also have access to your retirement annuity. So, so what happens after 55? So after 55, the retirement annuity will vest. Yep. So that means that you can access the, the funds in the retirement annuity. Um, there's two ways of accessing these funds. The one way is if the fund value is equal to or less than 247,500, you can t- make a one lump sum withdrawal. So you can take okay. a full fund value as a lump sum withdrawal. As soon as it exceeds that amount, then you are limited to only withdrawing one third in cash and the remaining two thirds then needs to go into an annuity that will pay a monthly income to you. Okay, okay. so there's always an accumulation phase in a retirement plan which is then investing in a retirement annuity up to the age of 55 where or after it doesn't necessarily have to be 55 where this then will be converted or let's say it matures where it will be then converted in a cash portion Mm -hmm. which then becomes discretionary money which is just a smart word for non-retirement money Mm -hmm. Um, and the other two-thirds is then an income, an annuity income, which we will also talk about in the, ne- in the, in the next episode, which is either a living annuity or a life annuity. Um, so let's talk about the tax benefits on a retirement annuity. So the, the premiums on retirement annuities are tax deductible. Uh, I think it's very important to remember that you are eligible to um, deduct or as a rebate, claim as rebate, up to 27.5% or um, 350,000 Rand of your contributions, the lesser of. Okay, 27.5% of 350. Okay. Um, but what determines this tax benefit is the marginal tax bracket that you pay your income on. So for an example, if you pay 40% um, tax on your monthly income, and the effective rate, yes. The effective rate um, that you are paying tax on your monthly income, it means that you will basically get back 40 cents in the rand for each contribution that you make towards that retirement annuity. Okay, so in layman terms, for every rand, what you're saying is for every rand that you invest, you get back 40 cents as a tax benefit when you submit your returns. That's 100% correct. Okay. Um, I think what is also important to note is if you reinvest that money, you start creating an exponential growth in a retirement annuity, which no other vehicle will offer you. So every time when you submit your returns to SARS, they ask for a tax certificate on your retirement annuity. And if you then get that return from them and you reinvest that money, it gives you a nice exponential growth opportunity over the time that you've got left. left but, yeah, like I said, it's important that you have to reinvest 
that rebate that you get from SARS mm. to basically get back that 40 cents in the rent. If you mm. don't reinvest that into your retirement annuity, um, it's just money that you can, discretionary money again, that you can spend on whatever you want to. Okay. But if you take that and you reinvest it into your retirement annuity, um, for so every one rent that you invest, you get 40 cents back. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the regulation in terms of asset losses that you can invest in with the retirement annuity. So there is what they call regulation 28, and in layman's what this basically mean is legislation has set out certain limits in terms of asset losses which you can invest. So for example, you can't invest more than 75% in local equity and 30% in, in foreign equity. This might obviously change over time. We've seen some changes to Regulation 28, but in terms of how you invest in a retirement annuity, the underlying asset losses, you are, you are limited. You are limited, yeah. And that's going to have an effect on your growth. Um, I think it's very important that they've um, they instituted this regulation to basically safeguard your capital because it's retirement capital. You can't just take 100% of these funds and put it offshore and then put all of your retirement capital at yes. risk. Yes. Um, so on that note, it's also very important to review your retirement annuity regularly, to sit down with your financial advisor and to make sure that you are within these regulations. Yes. And also as you go through the different life stages, so to start when you get closer to retirement, to start maybe opting or, or again, depending on your risk appetite, but looking at de-risking slightly and start protecting your wealth more, um, up until you then mature, then obviously look at, at other approaches, which again, we will, we will discuss in a future episode. Um, and if you are younger, then maybe looking at including a bit more risk in your, in your portfolio so that again, you can create growth over the full term. So I think on a last note, let's talk about the types of retirement annuities that you I do. I think get. this brings us to the question on how do you choose the, the right retirement annuity vehicle? Because there are two different options. The one is a policy-based retirement annuity and the one is unit trust. So a policy-based platform is a retirement annuity that is still regulated or remunerating according to the Long-Term Insurance Act, uh, which is commission-based. So it's a big commission structure that is paid upfront. So the policy is actually quite expensive for the first couple of years, um, of which that fee then actually fades out, which then makes it a bit more cheaper towards the latter years. So if you invested in that, in, in that policy-based solution for a long term. It is, however, important to note that it is quite rigid compared to the, to the alternative solution, which we'll discuss in a short moment. Um, in terms of, if you want to move that, there's always a form of an exit penalty. Um, if you want to make fund switches, you're normally limited to a certain amount of fund switches that you can do per year. Um, it's also, there's a lot of rigid fees in the form of marketing fees that's built into this portfolio, which, which doesn't necessarily make it as transparent to you as a client. However, we do feel that there might still be you know, a place, a place for this type of solution. So what is, a, what is the alternative which is called a unit trust based solution? So the unit trust is a fee based platform. That's a fee that you normally discuss upfront with the client. Uh, it's an ongoing fee that, that is get, get paid to the advisor. Um, and that fee is justified by the advisor sitting with you, reviewing your retirement annuity on a regular basis, making sure that you're all within regulation 28 and that you're sticking to your retirement goal. Um, it's, in my opinion, a bit more flexible and a comfortable option um, because there's no penalties if you want to transact on the um, annuity, for instance, if you want to increase and decrease your monthly contributions, or if you want to move the platform away from a certain service provider to another service provider, um, depending on your preference. Um, so there's a lot less bells and whistles to uh, unit trust. And there's a lot of more uh, portfolios that you can choose from as well yeah. um, in terms of investing in different asset classes in portfolios. Yeah. Um, but from a layman perspective, how do you identify a retirement annuity from what is policy-based and what's unit-based? What's the most common way and the easiest way for um, our viewers to, to, to distinguish between these two platforms? So a policy-based is typically um, a product that is taken with an with a traditional insurance company, if I can say it like that. For example, um, Sunlum would be a policy-based solution, whereas Sunlum Glacier would be a unit trust-based solution. Um, Momentum would be a policy-based solution, whereas Momentum Wealth would be a unit trust-based solution or a fee-based solution. Um, Similar with Liberty, I think Liberty will be a policy-based retirement annuity, where Stanlib, which is the investment house, will then be a, a unit, unit trust, trust platform based yeah. solution. Um, so. With PPS as an example, there is only unit trust. Um, they don't offer policy based. So it's, you shouldn't get confused that if you deal with an insurance company like Liberty, Momentum, Sunlum, um, that you are 
by default just dealing with a policy, a policy based, based solution. You have to look a little bit deeper into this. Um, whereas with PPS, just as in, uh, for interest sake, they only do offer unit trust. There's no yeah. policy based option. And I think you mentioned it earlier. I think typical questions would be what is the remuneration structure? Is it commission based? Is it fee based? Yeah. You know, in terms of changing the way on how I would like to contribute. Is there is there going to be penalties? Can I reduce? Can I stop it? With unit trust, you can. There's no ex there's no penalties, nothing. With a commission based, for example, you might be subject to a form of a penalty if you change the contractual agreement that is that is set upon starting and the rest of And the that day. commission will um, by default be on the proposal that's presented to you. So 100%. if you look at a proposal and you see there's a certain amount of commission that gets paid to the financial advisor, um, and I'm not talking about an ongoing advice fee, which will be a percentage fee. Which is uh, also disclosed. Uh, which is also disclosed. So the, the unit trust will be just a percentage, anything from 0% to 1%, uh, whereas the, the policy base will be a lump sum commission. Okay. All right, so thank you so much again for joining um, us on Money and Medicine today. If you haven't done so, please go to the bottom of this page and subscribe and also feel more than welcome to share some comments or share ideas on topics that we can talk about in the future. At the end of the day, we want this to be an educational platform where you can join in and gain as much info as possible. Until next time. Thank, thank you. you.